during the course of this week, um, fellow YouTuber by the name of Rich from uh, Review Tech USA uh, came out with a video stating that he and some other people, um, haters mostly, uh, were to thank for the third party support coming in to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, guys, um, out there at 7 RCT, and usually I don't take it upon myself to make these kind of videos. Uh, I mean, the unfilters are, are fine and okay, um, because I get to talk with you guys uh, about happenings in the gaming industry and basically an unscripted how I feel about stuff going on. This one, however, this one, uh, there's a there's a phrase used a lot on the internet um, uh, that's uh, spelled out triggered. Triggered is kind of like how uh, some of us are going to feel after watching this video because in many ways it's, it's pretty uh, cringeworthy. Now, <clears throat> I usually don't respond to this kind of drama even though it did not escalate um, like other dramas uh, and happenings going on in the industry this one was kind of subtle this one was kind of passive aggressive why well I'm gonna try my best given that I don't have a script like I mentioned and this is an unfiltered so this is like no hold barred um, let's go out and let's do this to give you my two cents of why this video, uh, the one I'm talking about, the one from Review Tech USA, which I will leave the links, and some other fellow YouTubers who responded to this video. Um, examples are uh, Player Essence, uh, RGT85, and Dr. Trey81, which, by the way, I, I must preface and say that out of everybody there, that you're gonna see in the links <clears throat> basically dr. Trey is the one that I feel more aligned with in terms of opinion of the real reason why third-party uh, titles are coming to the switch now that being said there's a lot more going on in my opinion again I have to state that a lot of people don't say this they just let their mouths do the talking and for some reason they end up um, criticizing somebody for taking credit for something and then they apply that credit to themselves that's not what's gonna happen here guys now first off I need to give you guys a little bit of back history in the whole deal there are several things that have happened along the, the past few years leading up to this point right now where we are right now now first off the switch in no way is in a position of guaranteed success because as a commercial product come on let's be let's be real here nothing is guaranteed success uh, uh, something could happen that could bring it down something could happen that could elevate it that being said for the past I would say five or six years being a tech uh, enthusiast being a gamer um, one of the things that you tend to gravitate towards is seeking information now in this internet age where everything is at your fingertips that basically you go to the internet and you'll find information on everything uh, with a little hard work maybe stuff that's not even available uh, to, the, to the regular mainstream consumer you're gonna be able to find info on now me as a gamer and as an enthusiast I would seek this information 
and I'm talking about way back at the time where even the Wii was in development okay I'm talking like post GameCube going into the Wii um, you know the whole revolution type deal going on code name at that point in time I would seek my information in two of the most at least at the present day most toxic uh, places to get information for depending on where your uh, allegiance lies uh, reddit and neogaf now I cannot say that all my experience there has been bad because to the contrary with the exception of a group of haters now that's a buzzword but back then haters is the only fitting name that you would get for that type of person is this type of person extremely toxic that no matter what you would like that person would find a reason to criticize and bring you down and try to make you feel bad for liking something in particular now you would find tons of that in uh, both of these places uh, on reddit and on, on neogaf now that being said that's not the only place that you're gonna find negative stuff because of course where there's more than one people there's always gonna be you know arguments and there's gonna be uh, contrasts and and conflicting opinions and stuff but I digress the point is even back then there was this thing this uh, this negativity that was starting to be you know started to started to brew back then that escalated to a point where a group of people a group of enthusiasts from I'm not gonna mention platform but from one of the side of the platforms that wasn't Nintendo in particular would leech or latch to that hating vibe creating this big movement of hate and negativity now it started back then but when the Wii U was being announced and being developed that is where things went crazy and out of hand and I can say this now not only in the forums that thing spread like a like a dark cloud or thick blob that permeated every single thing on the media even on the streets I mean people who were not um, let's say privy to information or interested in information that didn't maybe know about you know console wars and, and fans from this side or the other they would even know that it was kind of okay to trash Nintendo that's how bad it got it became a trend people hating Nintendo back from the PlayStation 3 and 360 days and this is coming from a person who uh, favorite system back then was the uh, uh, Xbox 360 but oh my god it was oh it was it was terrible it was terrible and that was one of the things that I feared the most going in to the development of the NX I feared that uh, negativity that uh, brewed back then that became something of a trend that became eventually mainstream it was okay it was cool to trash Nintendo for anything and everything would kind of uh, seep in to any kind of hope that this system coming forward from Nintendo the Nintendo switch or the NX known back then would um, quickly be you know uh, damaged by this negativity now let's jump a little bit forward in time that's I needed to go back into that position so I can better explain what comes up next of course with the Wii U with the advent of the Wii U everybody knows at this point in time that the Wii U was a commercial failure it did not sell enough units for it to be successful giving it um, even though it almost lasted a whole generation it lasted about four years but the support was dropped from Nintendo and things were rushed to get the switch or get the NX out there because of course as uh, every company out there they want to have a successful uh, item 
to be able to make money. That's a normal thing to do. Now, in the case of the Wii U, <clears throat> I can say on a consumer level, I was there from day one. I bought tons of games for it. I had plenty of fun with the system. I always loved the system. But my God, every time I would try to seek information, I would find basically everybody ganging up on anybody who would even mention the fact that they were enjoying any games on the platform. So that's what, what basically Nintendo fans had to deal with right up to this point on the present day. It still happens, but not at, uh, as much as it did back then uh, with the Wii U era. Now, with the Switch, that whole negativity was trying its best because, again... I always seek the information since uh, NX was first announced. I was, you know, in every single forum trying to get information from here, there, the leaks, this. That's part of the fun, you know, trying to seek information, especially if you are a tech buff. Now, the difference, lo and behold, is that the timing, I think that's one of the first things that, that I need to point out as a reason why things are are going much better now it's timing timing why because the negativity that was building up for all of these years that reigned supreme during all of these years were starting to die out there was a lot of people who basically were tired of the negativity um uh, people you know on the net that would try and bash something nintendo related would be you know uh differently from that um, day and age they would try they, they would basically brush it off and not pay too much attention so that part was starting to die off and it was a good thing because as new info started leaking from the system in, instead of diving into this negativity it would go into the opposite it would start building up hype uh, building up positivity now I'm not saying that's the sole factor or the sole reason why um, things went so well or are going so well so far. But here's the kicker and going to the main reason why I'm doing this video. Rich from Review Tech USA uh, does a video and that video he states later he tries to uh, damage control by saying you know that he was being sarcastic and stuff like that but no. no. I've, been, I've been following Rich for a long time and one of the things that always has killed me from him, and I have, you know, disclaimer, I have nothing against none of these YouTubers because I follow them constantly. Be it Rich from Review Tech USA, even though not as much as before, because there's one thing that I cannot stand from a content creator is constant flip-flopping. Meaning that you state something, and when the popular mindset changes, you change exactly with that and your stance is forgotten and rich has a tendency to do that back and forth wherever the, the clicks or the views are he's gonna be there that being said and I digress once more him player essence RGT 85 I I admire those guys dr. Trey 81 and many more content creators are excellent you know content creators in their own right and I respect their opinions and they're really cool people I, I enjoy and I love watching their their content now back to the thing uh, when I saw a video of course I cringed it was like oh my god I can't believe because in many ways even though he's not trying to be that way is very hypocritical because right now at this point if the switch wouldn't be selling the way that it's selling he would be singing to a different tune of course but the point of contention the point that I despise the most out of that statement is the fact that he says that the, the reason why things are going better specifically the third-party support is coming to the switch is because of all the haters the negativity that was placed on Nintendo and that caused Nintendo to change. Really? Come on. Come on, let's 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 be honest here. I mean, I already told you 
that's why I started talking about the negativity and all that crap going on. I can't think of one thing that rises from negativity. Not not one. Not even, you know, video game related or not. I, there's not one thing that, that comes good out of being negative. Now, taking that little basic premise, um, which you're going to think is my opinion, but it does hold true. Just think about it. What good can come from you saying over and over that, that a brand or a thing or a platform or a device sucks, 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 sucks. Everything that you go on on the internet, be it Android versus uh, versus iPhone, um, uh, Windows versus Mac, this versus that, there is nothing good that comes out of these people constantly bashing each other, insulting each other. So no, Rich, you did not help because you, among many others, were the haters back then. And this is a thing that, that really bugs me because in the beginning, Rich, I used to watch your content because you were just like me, a, a tech buff that would enjoy, you know, the stuff coming out. Even you had videos talking about your childhood with the Super NES and the Genesis and that whole war going on. You seemed like an authentic fan. But then when that negativity started coming out, you change your tune and then you raise a flag towards negativity and towards yeah we need to criticize everything that Nintendo does because that's the only way we're gonna make them change well no no actually Rich you know what wake up people around you they got fed up with that they got fed up with the negativity they got fed up with just seeing people criticize something that in the end they're not they don't have any intention of buying because they have already made their choice somewhere else. So why pay attention to people who are not going to see the good in something that is not going to even purchase it or support it? They're going to want their own opinion. They're going to want to look into something and try it out for themselves. Thankfully, that is exactly what happened with the Switch. Now, let me go into the reasons. I'm not going to explain or detail each and every one of the YouTubers who express their opinion or their response to Rich, I my response is simple. No, you're dead wrong. You can you're not even an iota close to um, what you just stated. That's my opinion. But to go into the real reasons why I believe the Nintendo Switch is getting third party support is many reasons and I like I said in the beginning, it's um more closely aligned with Doc Trey 81 uh, reasons, even though I kind of get a feeling that it's the whole, oh yeah, I said so versus what he said or whatever. No, no, no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. What I will say is a number of things. Number one, like I said before, timing. Timing because this platform is coming out at a time where Nintendo hate is um, it's already you know run its course people are getting tired of you know seeing bashers and haters and stuff like that so they're getting tired they want to see for themselves what's up and they're more willing now to give a Nintendo product uh, a chance right especially after the Wii U and how bad it went now the system itself the system itself, and this is Nintendo on Nintendo's, you know, court. They did an excellent job with Nvidia. Aligning with Nvidia was genius. Even I, who doubted, I was in the camp, basically, of people wanting it to be an AMD uh, console, and a console because I was hoping for a console. Which brings me up to a little side point. I hope I don't deviate too much. But this also brings up the whole Super Metal Dave and Player Essence deal going on. I need you guys to check 
that video, you have to look deep into the videos of Player Essence so you can find specifically the reveal of the Annex that was uh, broadcasted live where you see Player Essence and Super Metal Dave 64 uh, giving a, a you know kind of like there for the reaction of the reveal of the switch now why do I point that out it's very important here Super Metal Dave was coincidentally one of the guys who I followed a lot in NeoGAF uh, he had the handle of Trevor I think it was and he was one of the guys who was at that point one of the very few guys who were very positive on the forums versus all of these attacks and haters and negativity back then in the development of the Wii and Wii U. Ironically enough, he already had built up in his mind what the NX was going to be. And just like me, I, I mean, I went with that and I'm, I, I was right there aligned with him in what I wished the system would have been. A console, a monster console with AMD hardware that was going to rival or surpass the PlayStation 4 or Xbox. That did not happen. It came to a point where there were two separate um, camps, so to speak. One that was saying that it was going to be a hybrid, NVIDIA based, and another one that was going to be a console and it was going to be AMD based. That, and I, I say it without leaving anything behind, I was in that camp, the camp of the console. Now, when the reveal came to be, and Nintendo, this is another win for Nintendo, the reveal, oh my god, that reveal was knocked out of the park, that was beautiful, it went to the point, <coughs> it showed what the system could do, and it was genius, from seeing that reveal, I already wanted it, even though I, I probably would have bought it anyway, but the point is, the way that Nintendo um, basically um, transmitted what the concept of the system was, pushing it out there, um, advertising it heavily, which they didn't do with the Wii U, having it have an architecture, working with NVIDIA, leaving the hardware aspect to NVIDIA to work and design, that was genius. It would make them focus on software where they were lacking in many ways on the Wii U so yes if there is one thing that we need to uh, thank in any case for the third-party support that we're getting on the Nintendo switch <coughs> excuse me that would be Nintendo's change of focus change of um, usage of resources they invested heavily way back into basically condensing their R&D groups or you know R&D uh, development teams the ones that they had for portable and the ones that they had for console and they fused them together they built this enormous um, building that costs tons of money and they had everybody there they were prepared this is not an, an like an oversight or overnight kind of thing that they did they planned ahead for this. This was a step-by-step -step thing that they did. Number three in the reasons why we're getting this is after the passing of Iwata, we had Hiroshima. Hiroshima as president is a factor going in here because it's what it was being said that this president was a no bullshit kind of guy. He was gonna go in there and he was gonna do his job. And that, to this point, I must say he has. He came in there, he talked with investors, he laid out the plans, and even though the Switch or NX was still a baby product from Iwata, he took it and he gave it form, and he's pushing it out there, he's getting in people's faces, he's getting in there with third parties, so that is a commendable thing. He has done his job, and that's, to me, that's the third reason. Now, going forward, more reasons. The system is easy to make games to. It's an ARM-based system. It's leagues above 
what they had previously, which was the IBM setup um, power PC that was really outdated. Even though Nintendo did magic with that hardware, third parties were not willing in a day and age where third parties are used to getting money had it by Sony and Microsoft. And yes, I'm saying it. In the era of 360 and PlayStation 3, and even going into PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, third parties are just so used to getting money handed to them just to give this platform an exclusive. Gone are the days where third parties would sit down and just brainstorm to work with a hardware, look around, see how they can better exploit it. No. They want to build something easy, something that they can push to a console or a platform and just get paid. That's all they want. So Nintendo in this day and age has that thing going against them. What can they do to kind of close the gap that has broadened with the past uh, generations, make the platform easier to work with, make something that's easier to port third-party games, and at the same time, keep uh, good hardware for the first-party titles. And I think the next one, which is very important, is communication between Nintendo and the third parties. If the communication wasn't there, we wouldn't be seeing these titles. I've seen reports of developers from the upcoming Rocket League say how surprised he was going into the offices to deal with Nintendo and they're like, oh, oh my god, you know, what's gonna happen here? I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, you know, and talking and speaking with Nintendo and saying, you know, guys, we need to do this. And Nintendo responding, yeah, whatever you need. And them being surprised. That is one example how Nintendo has changed the way that they are dealing with third parties. If they communicate better, if they give the, the third party tools, of course they're going to come. They're going to see the potential. And the most important reason why. Why third parties are starting to come around because we still don't have all the third parties. It's not because... Um, Nintendo fanboys were uh, uh, dismissing the third-party support and uh, the haters were uh, there screaming, no, you uh, crazy Nintendo fanboys, hey, you don't know, you're in denial, this and that. No, it has nothing to do with that bullshit. <clears throat> the main reason to me is basically third parties now have access to an amazing... Uh, hardware they have all the tools that they need to program and of course the system is selling like crazy I mean think about it it's the most simplest reason that you can get if the system is not selling you're not gonna have third-party support because third-party support is not gonna even bother they're gonna come up with excuses like they did with the Wii U with the Wii U even third-party developers started bashing the system Granted, some of the things that they said were true, like having a weak CPU, uh, having some stuff of the hardware that was lacking, but that was never, ever a reason for third parties way back to have it as an excuse for not to develop for the system. I mean, think about it. The N64, <clears throat> the N64 was in many ways, it fell short compared to the PlayStation 1 and even Saturn in many aspects, one being the storage. That did not keep third parties away from the system because a lot of third party games came for that system. It's a matter of having a system seller. If you have a, a system that is selling well and you have a platform that you have a potential of selling millions upon millions of your game, of course you're going to go there. And you're going to work around, you know, whatever issues or problems may arise because you're going to seek, at the end of the day, the bottom line. Getting your game sold. Getting your money. So as it is right now, the, the system, the Switch, is setting worldwide very healthy numbers. So of course you're going to get third-party support going like, hmm, 
yeah, I was dismissing this, but I think I'm going to have a game over there. And uh, basically, at the end of the day, and the main reason, the main reason why we're getting third-party support and why the games are going to start getting better, just to close it, this up and kind of wrap it up, is basically the supporters. You, me, anybody else who got the Switch on day one that is buying the games. Um, true, I have been guilty of doing that. I, um, you know, buying a game perhaps that I'm not too interested in just to show support. Third parties are 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 having their they're they're keeping a close eye on on that how, how Nintendo fans even though they they have something that does not directly interest them make a purchase just to show support now I hope that's a thing that in the future does not become uh, something that third parties abuse it I'm hoping that they see that and they they understand that we are people who are willing to put money worth our where our mouth is and actually purchase a game if the game is good enough if the game you see that um, third parties put any care into it which leads us to the present day and what we are getting in the following months doom seems to be to me a labor of love uh, skyrim uh, la noir which is the first Rockstar game in ages for a Nintendo platform. Hopefully that will lead into GTA 5 or 6 or whatever the hell. So yeah, it's a good time, ironically enough, to be a Nintendo gamer in the mainstream sense of the word because now you can actually say that you like a Nintendo stuff and you won't have a league of people trying to bash you and trying to say a whole bunch of crap. So, yeah, I hope, I know this was long-winded and, and, and everything, but I just had to give my two cents in the whole thing of negativity and the whole thing of who is it to thank when it comes to third-party support on the Switch. So I hope that with that, I'll see you guys later. Stay tuned for the videos of, um, the video I'm going to be making right now. As soon as I finish here, I'm going to go into doing the video of the SNES classic hack so you can see how I have it now in the meantime have a great weekend and take care guys